basically, there's three general areas we focus on when we're developing new vehicles. First, uh, design, and we, ha we have to think about how do we interpret uh, what we call fluidic sculpture 2.0, our evolution of fluidic sculpture, in terms of our electrified vehicle lineup. And so in this case, it's all about more technology, more sophistication, and, and, a, and an effort to show the aerodynamic advantage of the car. So we reflect those elements in the design that you'll see in just a moment. You'll see it through front and rear changes, uh, you'll see it through lighting changes, and some other feature changes as well. And then the middle area is uh, efficiency and, and basically the things that go around efficiency, so low carbon footprint. Uh, so we've done that through a powertrain that's 10% better in terms of efficiency compared to the outgoing. We did that by downsizing the engine. We did it by uh, adding direct injection. We did it by a number of other technology features that Glenn will talk about in a little while. Uh, and we've also uh, done it with a plug-in by having a class-leading all-electric driving range. And we have so much to talk about in the plug-in. And actually, for me, that's a really exciting product. And hopefully, you'll feel that way too when you drive it today. Uh, so we want to we want to talk about the technology. The center part of the uh, of the graph here is a big part of the development of this car and the efficiency that comes with it. And then we want to talk about intuitive and thoughtful features as a key driver for the development of this car. It's not just about adding technology to the car, but adding technology that's useful, that helps people in terms of being convenient or reducing driver distraction, and things that are actually desired and wanted in terms of just daily use of the vehicle, like forward collision warning, a smart cruise control, works up to a full stop, lane departure warning, blind spot detection, uh, parking sensors, and we have also a blue link app for the plug-in vehicle to help identify uh, charge opportunities. <coughs> so when you look at our competitors, uh, this is the mid-sized car, uh, both the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid. So for the hybrid, basically the Camry, uh, Fusion, and the Accord are its key competitors. Uh, and you'll see in a minute uh, how we compare against those cars. And then the plug-in side, uh, the Fusion Energy and the Accord plug-in hybrid are our key competitors. Keep in mind, these are all mid-sized cars, and either plug-in or hybrid variant for those mid-sized cars. Uh, talking just a moment again about exterior design, the idea was to really show through the changes for these cars how the technology is reflected in the exterior design that's included in the interior in terms of powertrain and safety and convenience. And so there was a focus on the elements that were changed to give kind of a high-tech and sophisticated feeling, as you see here in these photographs. So you can see, oops, I went too fast. Uh, you can see the scope of change. Basically, the whole front and rear was changed, including the lamps, grill, uh, and the lower area, the fascia area. On the side, the wheels and the rocker. And on the rear, uh, also, the fascia and lamps were changed. So basically, you can see with the front, just gives it a bit more crisp and a bit more sophisticated look than the standard Sonata models. Uh, we offer two grills, one uh, with Smart Cruise, one without for the uh, higher packages, higher trims. And you can see with the headlight graphic, if you compare it to the standard Sonata, much more sophisticated and kind of a tech-oriented graphic on the lamp. And similar to the rocker panel, it just gives it a bit of a smarter appearance. In the rear, it's kind of the same thing. You see the graphic element around the tail lamp, the LED graphic that gives it a more, a more techy and sophisticated look. Uh, you can see the alloy wheels that are focused on minimal uh, aerodynamic drag. And we also have an uh, aerodynamic rear bumper that, that keeps the laminar flow of the, of the air moving across the car and having a smooth brake as it leaves the car in the rear. We have, the, uh, through our engineers' efforts, the best coefficient of drag available in the light vehicle market today with these cars. So we're tied with the Tesla Model S. Uh, we're a little bit less expensive than them, so we're thankful for that. Uh, and we're hopefully going to sell a lot more volume. Uh, so we're at 0.24 CD, and that's just been through a tremendous amount of work by our engineering. And it's all about managing the laminar flow of, of air across the body and managing the break of that air as it leaves the body. So you can see in the front, we do it through active air shutters and the air intake for the engine cooling. Uh, we do it through uh, the lower bumper air curtain. And again, this is to create laminar flow across the wheel area and the wheelhouse area. Uh, the center underfloor, uh, underfloor cover to keep smooth air flow under the vehicle. And then a rear spoiler that allows a clean break of the air and minimizes turbulence and the drag that results from that turbulence. Uh, and the eco spoke gallon wheel I mentioned earlier, which minimizes drag by having an optimized uh, shape to minimize 
The turbulence is created by the spokes of the wheel. So, in the mid-sized segment, when you study customers in this area of the market, it's all about a balance of easy maneuverability and parking and visibility against the biggest possible interior cabin size. So, when you look at the exterior of the car, we're about mid-pack, which is good. If we're too big, customers complain that it's too hard to park, too hard to maneuver, I can't see out of the back. If it's too small, of course, then the interior package starts to suffer. So, when you compare uh, the outgoing, uh, what we call the YF, the old Sonata Hybrid, to the new one, we're a little bit longer and a little bit wider by about an inch in order to uh, get what you'll see in a moment is a tremendously good interior package. When you talk about body rigidity and strength, remember body strength does a couple of things. One, it enhances our ability to manage crash energy in a, in a vehicle accident. But two, it allows you to manage NVH and it allows you to have a much quieter cabin. And then three, it allows you to have the potential for a much better ride and handling capability because you're not using the body to manage body uh, road irregularities. So in this case, we went from 21% advanced high strength steel with the outgoing model to over 50% high strength steel. Uh, and by doing so, we increased uh, torsion rigidity by over 40%, which is really a tremendous achievement by our engineers. And you can see the summary chart on the right-hand side uh, the co combination of hot stamping, 100K steel, 60K steel, adds up to that, uh, that 51% of advanced high strength steel applied on the body. And you can see, for example, the darkest color, the hot stamp, is usually the side area, which has to manage the side crash energy, and the over rollover energy in a rollover accident. And then you can see the other areas, that, the, the lighter colors, that show the succeeding, the, the declining levels of strength. The interior, uh, we have unique instrumentation for the plug-in hybrid and the hybrid models as well. We replaced the tachometer with a power gauge. So the power gauge gives you a quick indication of how much energy is being used to move the car down the road. So it gives you a very active indication of uh, your ability to either improve uh, fuel economy or extract more power from the powertrain. And then the center display, both the instrument cluster as well as the center stack. Uh, there's a lot of convenient information to monitor how you're doing in terms of fuel economy and power consumption. And of course, there's a charge indicator light from the plug-in model. So as I leave the vehicle, I can confirm that the cable's properly connected and the charger's been activated. So let's get to the good stuff. Uh, we have some great news in terms of the interior package. We start with best-in-class front seat headroom and legroom. And we get that just through very, very clever packaging in this product. Uh, good use of the interior space and good body structure design. In every other dimension, we're very competitive, as you can see on this table. And then you move to the rear and the overall interior cabin, and we have best-in-class interior cabin space, best-in-class cargo space, best-in-class overall interior space of the vehicle versus any of our competitors. So our total interior volume is 119.4. Our nearest competitor is a little bit less than 116. So we have the best trunk volume at 13.3, our nearest competitor at 13.1, <coughs> and we have the best interior volume at 106.1, substantially higher than any of our competitors. Uh, they're all in the 102 range, by 102 range. But that's not the end of the good news. Uh, we also have a very well designed uh, plug in and hybrid battery and power management layout. And so, compared to our other competitors, we're the only one that has a completely flat load floor a completely open pass-through, just like our gasoline model. So you can still carry oversized objects just like you can with a gasoline model with no compromise. You don't give up trunk space uh, like you do with our competitors' uh, models. You get to enjoy all the things you enjoy with a conventional gasoline mid-sized car. Uh, I'm sure some of you have driven the uh, Camry or Accord hybrid recently, and you know how much cabin, um, how much trunk space and lack of pass-through that you <coughs> suffer in order to store the battery packs. And we've done that through very clever engineering, keeping the battery pack in the underfloor area of the vehicle. Uh, one more thing to talk about before I hand things over. Uh, we have a great warranty story. So our batteries for both the hybrid vehicle and the plug-in hybrid are a lifetime warranty to the customer. Lifetime warranty. But you, it doesn't end there. You can look at the overall vehicle warranty. 
Uh, you know, we, we've called ourselves the company of America's best warranty for quite a while, since 1998. <coughs> you can see it here when you compare it to our competitors. So we have a five-year, 60K basic bumper-to-bumper -bumper new vehicle warranty. A powertrain warranty is basically double of all of our competitors. Uh, and then hybrid-related components, uh, comparable, because that's regulatory-driven. And then, of course, the battery warranty that surpasses every competitor. So we have a great story in terms of you know, cost of ownership and the confidence that customers want when they're buying products with all of this new technology.